Mini is about big style, not big size. For those who've admired the design but couldn't wedge their lifestyle into the car, the new Countryman might size up nicely. A petite crossover with bling, it's the first Mini with four doors, four comfortable seating positions, and the option of all four wheels getting power. A lot of people are calling the Countryman the big mini. Uh, clever, yes, but it's not a large vehicle. It's about 16 inches longer, 6 inches higher, and 4 inches wider than the original mini. That makes it similar in size to Nissan Juke, a few inches wider than Honda Fit. Not exactly a Suburban. This is an S model, so the 1.6 liter four-cylinder is turbocharged. 181 horsepower is on tap. Choose between a six-speed automatic or the standard six-speed manual with solid, hefty action. Reverse takes a little effort. Countryman weighs some 400 pounds more than a standard Mini, so zero to 60 in around eight seconds is expected. The added heft and height keep it from having its little brother's go-kart quality handling in the corners, but it's still fun to fling around. Visibility is good, ride quality firm, road and wind noise a little higher than average. This front wheel drive tester is EPA rated at 26 city, 32 highway. Brakes are quite good with excellent modulation. The sport button tightens up the steering and throttle response and makes the engine sound throatier. Order the automatic transmission and it remaps shift points too. Even with the powerful turbo engine, there's only a small amount of torque steer and the wheel doesn't get squirrely in hard maneuvers on rough roads. Opting for the all four all wheel drive system would most likely take care of any that exists. I did drive a different Countryman equipped with all four all-wheel drive in nasty conditions. Does this look like it's having any problems? While it's not designed for severe off-roading, it'll handle terrain worse than most owners will ever try to tackle. Inside, the speedometer's as big as a pie pan. Hey, it's a Mini. The cabin's very distinct look is unmistakable. The tack has a small digital speedometer in case you find the big one distracting. Window controls are all down here with toggle switch gear that feels great. Phones and iPods are supported with an optional package. The sound system interface could be a little bit more intuitive. Heated seats have substantial bolstering to hug people in place. Materials are a mix of sort of soft and hard. Set and forget auto climate control is single zone. Does dual zone even make a difference in a smaller car? The premium sound system should satisfy most. Even the pedals have good design. He's always wanted to sit up front, so this time for the Evil Twin backseat test, Mr. Evil gets to sit up front. Yeah, for once, I'm not going to be the one smashed and crammed in the back of the Mini. It's actually pretty roomy back here. Leg and foot room are good for average size guys like us. Power port? Check. The two individual seats recline and slide fore and aft. Clip accessories onto the rail to customize the space. The optional glass roof keeps things bright and airy. In short, pretty comfortable. You know, I hate you. What can I say? Some gripes. Dropping the rear seats is an awkward reach. Keyless ignition is great, but why two taps to shut it down? Materials are generally good, but this, uh, well. At $32,400 as tested, there's no all-wheel drive, nav system, or backup cam. Also, I've come to appreciate the tap for three blinks feature, a BMW feature missing on this Mini. As you might expect, the Countryman's cargo area is bigger than a standard Mini's. There's a good amount of space under the floor. Even the jack gets packaged well. Unlike the Clubman model, Countryman gets a hatch to protect from rain. With the floor removed for maximum capacity, the score is a six. The same as a mid-sized sedan. The largest thing this Mini has is personality. People like the chunky look. With easy access to every seat, families who've always liked the brand's style and performance can finally get a Mini that's practical, if not inexpensive. And that is a big deal. Prices start at $22,350 for a front-wheel drive version without the turbo engine. That means 121 horsepower and front drive only. That's also without Bluetooth, part of a $1,250 convenience package. Anybody else see a little bit of Toyota FJ Cruiser happening in the Countryman's rear here?
It travels incognito. There's nothing on the exterior that offers up Countryman's name. There is a Cooper badge, though, which I find a little confusing. Why not keep that moniker for the original and let Clubman and Countryman get more distinct identities? I'm just saying. Well, that's my take on the Mini Countryman. Pretty unique vehicle. Not an awful lot of cars you can cross shop with this one, though I might suggest the Nissan Juke. It's similar in size and mission. That video is here on DrivenCarReviews.com. Check it out. In the meantime, that's Driven. I'm Tom Volk.